So is that why your nickname was General Butt Naked? Yes, because I was naked, because I fought naked. A lot of people would drink or do drugs before fighting? Yeah, most of my boys, Yeah. then we drain the blood from the innocent child and drink it before going to battle. So you kill the, the child? Yes. And then drink the blood? Yeah. I left it up on a chopper, I'm going to eat it. So what kind of war is this? Gorilla? World War II. We here at Vice have been fascinated by Liberia for a long time. It's America's first and only foray into quasi-colonialism in Africa. It started as a back to Africa movement for freed slaves. In fact, a constitution was written in Washington and Monrovia, the capital city of Liberia, is actually named after President Monroe. And it became a state in the 1840s. So the freed slaves go back to Africa and promptly enslave the native Africans based on the plantation method they had learned in the US, which lasts for about 140 years until Samuel K. Doe, the first native African-born Liberian, was elected. But this doesn't last very long. Why? Because an American-educated, and some would say American-backed, rebel leader named Charles Taylor and his buddy Prince Johnson came from America and overthrew him. We are not a military group here. I'm not a soldier. What we seek to do is to destroy these military dictatorships around Africa. And that's that Charles Taylor virus. If the civilians can throw out the army, wow, we are in trouble. Well, I love it. We will fight to the last man. I will get weapons from wherever I have to get it. If the Pentagon's got some, please give me some. Despite reports that the government wants talks with the rebels, the violence goes on. The government and people of this country assure you that the armed forces will protect them and that the rebel will soon be eliminated. Rebel forces stormed into the center of the capital today. They are now less than a mile from the executive mansion where President Samuel Doe has barricaded himself with about 500 soldiers. In fact, Prince Johnson, who got to Doe before his buddy Charles, ended up torturing him, cutting him up, and is rumored to have eaten him while filming the whole thing. So Charles Taylor finally gets elected with a campaign slogan that reads, he killed my ma, he killed my pa, but I'll still vote for him. And it works. He gets elected. But he's so corrupt that soon after, there's a bunch of warlords fighting for control over Liberia, the country devolves into civil war, and things go from bad to severely fucked up. I know somebody who want to kill me. If I grab you, I will eat you. Go. But this is like a civil war on steroids. It's a post-apocalyptic Armageddon with child soldiers smoking heroin, cross-dressing cannibals, systematic rape. It's total hell on earth. We love the music. There's a music. They call it the sound of death. Yeah, but it's a sound of music to us. Liberia's been in the news a lot lately because Charles Taylor is on trial at The Hague for war crimes. But we wanted to know what happened to all the other warlords. So we contacted a Canadian journalist who lives in Liberia named Miles Esty, who's kind of a Kurtz-like character, tall, skinny, skeleton guy, who's had malaria more times than he's had hot dinners. And he said he could get us access to all these ex-warlords. So we said, great. We got on a plane and we flew to Liberia. When you first get to Monrovia, the first thing you think is, it's really hot. It's really hot, it's really poor, and it's totally chaotic. In fact, when we went to pick up Miles, he had just gotten out of the hospital with malaria. He gets in the car and he says, are you ready to go? We're going to Baboon Town in the red light district to meet our first general, 
General Bin Laden. So as we drove to Baboon Town, we asked Miles, what's up with the name General Bin Laden? And he said, well, a lot of the generals took different names because they didn't want to be identified after the various wars. And these pseudonyms were meant to strike terror into the hearts of their enemies. So there's a General Rambo because he's scary. There was a General Mosquito because mosquitoes are terrifying because they bring malaria. The general that fought General Mosquito was named General Mosquito Spray. And of course, there's General Bin Laden. In fact, there's two General Bin Ladens. Our General Bin Laden, we found out en route, had just been put in jail. Now, he didn't know why, but he suspected because the authorities found out that we were coming with cameras to shoot him. And they say they're, they're not going to let him out, but we can interview him in the jail and we can interview the commander. Let's do that. Let's go there. Can we go there now? Yeah. Let's go now. So the minute we arrive in Baboon Town, our car is surrounded by a bunch of sketchy dudes. So when Miles came back and said we could interview Bin Laden in the police station, I was like, yeah, let's get out of here and get in there really quick. So we get into the police station and it's chaos. Some guards are saying you can go see him, other guards are saying you can't go see him, and we just have to sit there and wait. I like being in the police station. <laughs> nice. Monkey. Little monkey. He's got herpes, I think, or something. Hi. What's wrong with the monkey? Why is the monkey here? What did the monkey do wrong? Why is the monkey here? We're in a police station in the middle of the red light district to meet General Bin Laden and wondering why the monkey's here. And eventually, after sitting there for a while, we realized, oh, we've got to grease some palms. So we gave them some money, and bang, we were back into the jail, and we could talk to Bin Laden. Hey, Bin Laden. Yeah. How are you? My friend Shane. Shane. I'm Bexy, yeah. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. We're going to try to get you out uh -huh. of here now, and uh -huh. then we can, we can go back. We can go back and stop at the program. Okay. Next, okay. That would be fun. All right. All right. We're going to do it right now. Now. Okay. You. God bless you. You got him out. What do we have to do? You know what he did? You know, yeah, I know what he did. Just we're talking about to get him out. What do we have to do? Yeah, when you pay that money, or you know you to who? Pay, you know, oh, what do you mean? So, so we want to video take, video take this this station without permission. Is that what we do? So, yeah. If you do not get any permission from me to, to video take my office. Okay, well, okay stop. 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 It's off. Stop. Permission. It's off. The video is off. He's carrying. He's just holding it right now. Well, I hope that um, I have not been recorded here <laughs> of air because you know this is a criminal. Look, we're good people. We're should, good. I just Nobody. Want Nobody's out. recording anything. Anyway. You just need to pay some cash. Can get all sure, I can give him cash. Can we can we pay him and pay you a fine and then take him? Fine. Okay, great. That's good. Okay. Okay, let's go. 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 Okay, let's go. Let's go. We went in there. I don't. We're being followed by the police right now. Yeah, we might have to change tapes or do something because we, what we do is we shoot cards yeah, and if they come, we can give them the tape. There's nothing on the tape. You can have a blank tape in there? Yeah, we do, tape right now. Just, we should just get out of here. No, now go to the White House. Now go to my White House. No, I'm, don't worry. All day picking there. No, I'm going to take my tape. Yeah, every, uh, uh, every morning, I'm a boss man. Okay. Don't worry on that. Wait, Photograph wait. what you want to do here. Yeah. Okay. This is my compound. You are free. Okay. No police come here to do anything to you. You were modest, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our trip is getting progressively heavier. We will go on top of the building. Yeah, that'll be good. We go on top of the building. Okay. I'm kind of a little bit worried that the police are gonna come get us right now. I gave them a fake name and fake number. It's one of my law. Uh, Mr. National Security, right? Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I want you to see you for yourself. Okay, okay. We're happy that you are here. Thank you. Right. So, Thank you. So after we got Bin Laden out of jail, he was very excited to get us up to his rooftop and tell us his story. And according to him, the ex-generals, who are now the community leaders, are the only ones doing anything to help the people. So maybe you could explain uh, a little bit about, so first of all, you, you became known as Bin Laden during the war. During the war. And then after the war, now you're sort of trying to help people by carpentry and by karate. Karate. And... After the war, 
I see some friends going astray. Yeah. You know? So long hours as a general, I'm gonna make sure and bring them together. Yeah. So I do both capital and mystery. Yeah. And I got men that are in my workshop who do capital work and I got a fee who do martial art. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get any money here? We do our own collection sometime before we can have rehearsal. No, but the UN or the government doesn't give you any money. Nothing. The government does not give me no support. Nothing. The, the UN does not give me support. It's the first time meeting you people, yeah. recording me, and here getting information from me. We only need the government attention to and is our this, program. Is this area, is this is red light here? It's a red light, Gubachok. Yeah. This is red light. And is it, is it, is it, uh, is there a lot of crime in red light? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's wet time. This is red light. Red light. Now it seems like everyone, uh, everyone hanging around knows how we got him out and for how much, and that has gotten around. And it's, a, it's a hot topic of conversation. I don't think Shane knows that, so he's nice and calm on the screen. <laughs> but uh, keeping the stress level a bit, a bit higher than usual. Look at Labira. Look at Labira. We can build a place. We don't expect this old country that was born under Christian principle. People should be in government office with blood under their hand. Yeah. Let them open their mind and their heart to the country. Why should Mama Labura sing in poverty? So Miles comes over, stops the interview, and says, we have to get the fuck out of here now. And Bin Laden looks down and he goes, yeah, yeah, those are my guys. You guys should really go. So Bin Laden gave us an escort, and a couple of his guys got us through the crowd, to the car, and we got the fuck out of here. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Holy fucking shit. But that was out of hand, we gotta get out of here. There was some heavy duty vibes there, boy. So after meeting and being freaked out by General Bin Laden, we wanted to see what the UN and government were doing to rebuild Liberia. So we met a local journalist named Nagbe, and we asked him, and he said, you wanna see what the government and UN are doing? I'll take you to West Point. So West Point is the worst slum in Liberia, which makes it one of the worst slums in West Africa, which makes it one of the worst slums in the world. And when you first get there, the first thing you want to do is get the hell out. It's open sewers everywhere, shit, piss, garbage, everything mixed in, and the stench is overpowering. Hey, this is West Point. People live here like this for years, man. Mm. It's more or less a microcosm of the city. Virtually all the major tribes living in Liberia, living in West Point. Now, West Point happens to be one of the most devastated part of the world because of the people here don't have toilets. And because they have no toilets, they use the fish. Oh, dude, it really stinks here. They're not taking care of the community, you know. But I mean, one of the first basic rules is don't shit where you eat. That's that's it. That's but the number one rule. Yeah, but the people, the people violate that rule, obviously. But the government has to do something about that. Seriously, I mean, but they're not doing it. The commissioner himself sometimes go on the beach mm. and squat and shit with the people. Mm -hmm. So even in one of the worst slums of Western Africa you see the cultural impact that America has there. All the kids are wearing Biggie or Tupac t-shirts. And in fact, one kid came up to us and said, hey, I'm a rapper, can I rap for you? And we said yes. And it wasn't about bling and it wasn't about Cristal. Huh. It's getting busy, drinking blood from the body. Slim is the first, death is the last. Believe it or not, it's easier to attack. Every woman need a man, every hand's on the shoulder. Mother's Lauren was a born Liberian. Yo. She never had money, so she started sucking dick. Yo. A pretty young woman is another man's slave. Yo. Mother D. Lauren had a viral cut ace uh -huh. on her face. We step a signal killing boys. We step a signal killing girls. Yeah, we step a signal killing never. Yeah, we step a signal Everybody. And is there a lot of malaria in here? A lot. Needless to say, in West Point, health conditions are foul. Diseases everywhere. Malaria, infections, and AIDS are rampant. Yeah. 
these electronic shops. Yeah. If they are just cover up. Cover up for heroin. For heroin. Wow. It's a big business. We heard stories that during the war, the rebels would go out in boats with diamonds and trade the diamonds for weapons and, and cocaine. And it was a lot of Colombians and Mexicans. It, it, it did happen here. We find it interesting because Cocaine and heroin are very expensive drugs, yeah. so we were surprised to find heroin here. Usually in poorer countries, yeah. there's uh, you know speed or meth or like things you can make. I feel all time Why coming is that? here. The Nigerians. The Nigerians bring it. The cookie, the make it, make it so, make it. Nana, you want smoking here? What happened, Fefa? We smoke two, we smoke two part type of market. We smoke heroin and we smoke coke. Yeah. I don't want to smoke to be vigilant. We're gonna be talking. You better smoke this up, please. Let's take down. We're not making market sport. Goodness, twenty. Quoi <laughs> Now, how our players that we see doing this is hard. We call him nothing. He is nothing. The man is nothing. Not a call nothing. If you show the hard way our players, you won't sleep. But you don't sleep. So, which is nothing now. You don't want to smoke a cookie now. No, I don't want to smoke a cookie to calm down now. Hey, Jody, you don't want to fly now. No. You remember that? Behind these areas are small, small shops that are used as brothels. And you can pay between fifty to seventy-five to hundred dollars. Liberian dollars. Liberian dollars. So how much is that? Less than one dollar. So because of the poverty, a lot of women have to become prostitutes. Yes. Or we like to use the term sex worker. Sex worker. <laughs> we can go this way. We don't have no money. So we sell straight to get money. Almost such a world of feed and if one or two women, we got a part dying in the war. Fifty dollar, thirty dollar, twenty dollar, the fuck, just to eat something. I'm a homosexual where I can see I can eat rat or incest, I can eat bingo, I ain't no cast more. Well, we can, we can take the corner and we'll show you the brothel we're going to go to tonight. Yeah. But we're not going to do anything no, we'll else. Just, you can just, just pass through, all right? No small talk, guys. So now we're in a brothel. We're going to come back tonight. It's not open right now. Shikanam's here. We got some, some stains some here, some stains blood here. and shit. Not very clean. Towel used for wiping. This is pretty good. How do we get out of here? Yo, look this way. The legacy of civil war in Liberia is staggering. It's the fourth poorest country in the world. 50% of the country is illiterate. 70% of the female population has been raped. 80% of the population is unemployed, and a large percentage of the population has eaten human flesh. Till the real meat. Every day you like to eat it every day. You want, you want to see some peace? It, it, it happens a whole lot. Even in Liberia now, whenever you see there are bodies found somewhere, or maybe you drown in the river, genital parts are taken off. Some uh, legend added that the female genital <laughs> Is preparing a way where the man can put it here, well it, and carry it around, and use it as a source of power. You know, and some people believe that when they do these things, they have power over their, over their colleagues. You know. Now, one of the warlords responsible for these atrocities, who fought in all three civil wars, is a guy named General Rambo, who we picked up at a market, and he said, "I'll talk to you if you take me to the old headquarters of the rebel factions outside of town." Nice, Billy. When did the hotel stop uh, working? 1990, yeah. Because when of the war. Came. Yeah. And at that time, I was in the army as an EFS soldier, master sergeant. Oh, those days, the place was so beautiful, so nice. Our country. 
country destroy beyond all reservoir doubt, there is not easy way to fix it. Everybody stranded around, bodies were laying all over the city. Yeah. So overnight they go and do their butchery, board and cook. They had some of the human parts in the way that they carry around and sell. Yeah. Yes, it happened. Many people were not normal because the rebel leaders those times used to send drugs. The cocaine, the bubbles, the doogee, the marijuana and all of that. So they do things wrong because of the drugs that they take. So you were one of the ones that came in to take out Taylor? Yes. And then at one point, the American government came to try to get you to go to Iraq. Yes, the people sent people here. To, for, because, you know, Liberia, let's say back days, we used to call small America. Yeah. And all our training that we took is on America, yeah. strictly America. America. So we know ourselves as a reserve soldier of America. So then there, America had a problem. We're supposed to be second in motion to help. Yeah. And so when there was Iraq, it was like, okay, let's go, we can help. Oh, well, fine. Yeah, so why, why, what happened? The government denied us from going. The, the government wouldn't they, let you go? Yeah, they, oh, they, right. they disbarred our whole process. Do you think it's a problem that you have all these ex-combatants mm -hmm. who grew up fighting, you fought in three wars, yeah. they have no money, they have no job, and isn't that a problem? It's a big problem, because where you have mostly the youth that had the muscles that can cause trouble anytime. Yeah. I'm not certified, then that doesn't mean the bad things happen. Yeah. But things are not okay. Anything can happen, anything can blow up at any time. Mm -hmm. The problem here, we don't come out to talk too much. Showcase that bad things are in the land. Yeah. So therefore, the country should be free all the arm. Yeah. So I will go to every hole to do session. Mm -hmm. We went in this Lofa jungle for one month. Yeah. We will met people with muscle, they said they can launch the elephant with, 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 with RPG. So they're still there with the guns. Yeah, they stay there with the guns. Yeah. The war is hot. So if the rebel forces wanted, they could take over tomorrow? In less than two, three hours. Two, three hours. Sure. Wow. I'm an ambassador of war. Right. So if I see firing coming, that will not be part of it. I will be part. Mm -hmm. Because again, look at no one came in like that. Me, I'm a stress soldier, man. And I love to be soldier until I die. And do you think there's a possibility of that happening? Yes, when yeah. UN is not here, the possibility that I can happen. Yeah. Yeah. So what Rambo is saying is, there's still plenty of guns in Liberia, and him or someone like him can take over Monrovia in two hours if the UN leaves, and the UN is scheduled to leave next year. And as we said our goodbyes to Rambo, we told him we were going back to West Point. That place, West Point, is dangerous. Yeah? Very dangerous. You were very lucky that you get out, they didn't carry the camera. You can still see the violence in them. No law and order in rebel activity. Cannibalism, chaos, killing, right. rape, everything. Everything. A few years ago, we did an article in Vice Magazine called General Butt Naked versus the Tupac Army about a particularly fierce Liberian warlord called Butt Naked, who fought naked, his child soldiers fought naked, and they were cannibals. So we asked Rambo if he knew him by chance, and he said, in fact, we're from the same tribe, I know him well. And he promised to set up an interview while we did our follow-up in the brothels of West Point. Driving into West Point at night is pretty freaky. There's no electricity grid in Monrovia, so it's pitch black. It's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest, it would make a sound. Like if a fucking van goes missing. Hit it on the wall. Hit it on the wall. So this is the craziest, fucking scariest drive ever. Down here, we got a little bit lost in the port and you couldn't see anything, there's no electricity, and then you just see like people wandering around, <laughs> fucking shit, piss, fucking yelling at us, ah, oh, we want money, we want money. Now there's no lights in here, we're gonna go in here. This is the brothel. Uh, we're gonna see what's going on. Hello. How are you? A lot of dudes are coming in now, it's crazy. I don't know where we're going. That's right. Wow. Oh. 
that room looks, this is the exemplification of hell, really. Right now we're in chalet number five. Huh? I don't know what happens in here, but I don't want to know. Wow. What the fuck goes on in here, dude? Wow, wow, wow. Well, uh, we were here a little bit earlier. There was used condoms and blood-stained sheets, and now they've sort of done it up. So we're going to interview some of the girls, see what they have to say. We have a code for when something's freaky. We go, it's nar nar. <laughs> nar nar. One of the things we had heard since we arrived in Liberia was about the alleged sexual misconduct by the UN staff. So we asked the girls at the brothel about it. I see UN guys having sex with small, small children. Have you seen it? Yes. They just have sex with you. They show you off for the area they beat you from. I, I received some beating and off for them. No support, nothing. No suffering. No job, nothing. I live here. They call it paradise. Okay, paradise. I want you to give me a job. Yeah. For myself. What sort of work do you do in West Point now? I'm a petition. Okay. I keep from a cosmetology school. Alright. For Rioton. Okay. Which is on a cap. Alright. Training assistant program. Okay. I wanna tell him that. I got my certificate. Alright. I got everything for myself. Okay. But I will now go father tell him, give me what I want. Okay. Now. All right. We will talk so, about listen that. Listen to me. Listen to me. Sit down. Listen. Let me have a ball. Listen. I will tell my own last story. Me, I'm an orphanage child. Listen. 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 As soon as the girl started screaming, a bunch of heads popped into the room. And then when she started screaming about money, everyone was going, money, 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 where's the money? And at that point, Nagbe said to us, you better get the hell out of here. So we sort of took off through the tangled alleyways and just tried to get back to the car. We're getting the fuck out of here right now. And when we got to the car, our driver, who was also supposed to be our security, was so freaked out that he peeled out and nearly hit a group of people that had surrounded the car. And if you hit a group of people down deep in West Point, that was it. It was a death sentence. They would have tore us apart. That was very fucking heavy. Dude. Dude. It, it, it's like, I just, whenever I get into weird situations, I just try to envisage myself explaining it to my dad. So dad, just to recap, worst slum in history, heroin, hookers, white and fat men, He'd probably say, you're a stupid little fucker. You deserve to die. And to make things even freakier, as we're pulling out of West Point, Rambo texts Miles and says, not only does Butt Naked want to do the interview, but that he's waiting at our hotel for us. Yeah, now we're going back to sanity. <laughs> to hang out with an ex-cannibal, multi-murderer, who's now staying in our hotel and decided not to leave. Because <laughs> if we're there, we was to hang out. Meanwhile, he knows I have tons of money. And he's on the run because people want to kill him. Should I just leave my door open, General? <laughs> Do you want to come in? You mentioned about sacrifices. Can you give us maybe an estimate of how many civilians you think lost their lives when your group was fighting war as a direct result? It should not be less than 20,000. Now we are very nervous to meet General Butt Naked, and he's very nervous to meet us because he's had several assassination attempts against him, and he wants to meet us and vet us before he'll okay an interview. <laughs> when we told him about our escape from West Point that night, he laughed and he seemed to ease up. And after that, he asked for a phone, he called Rambo, and it was on. Hey, Dico. Yeah. Blah you, blah you, blah you. What's up? Joshua Blay, Bot Nikki. Bot Nikki. Yes, away guys. They are good guys. The guy the guys are good guy, man. 
Tell, tell the boss lady hi, yeah? Mom, like you now. But you became comforted, right? Yes, sir. Are you the same Joshua Bly now who they call evangelist Bly? Yeah. We asked the general, now known as Joshua Blahi, why people were trying to kill him, and he told us that it was because he had been recently pardoned for his war crimes. And when we asked how he got pardoned, he told us it was his conversion to Christ and his becoming a man of God. Because when I got confided, it was a household news. Everybody in Liberia, ah, General Bodnicki got confided all over Africa. Because the first question people ask me, they say, Joshua, don't you think uh, you decide to be Christian so that you can escape persecution? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. Because I could have gone back. I could have gone back. Several times I was attacked. And I told them, if anybody wants to kill me, you only kill me because two years ago I fought you, or you don't like what I'm preaching, but I cannot go back to my vomit. I have left the wall, and it was all over. So we talked with Joshua late into the night until he told us to get to bed because the next day he was going to show us his Liberia. So in the morning, Joshua Blahi took us out, and the first stop was the area within Monrovia that he used to control during the war. So this was my this was my control, control area. And who, who would be attacking? Charles Taylor, men, NPF, they were calling themselves government forces at the time. Right here, this is where I have my crutch, my crutch chair. Yeah. I sat in the chair, my boys are all around yeah. singing. The, the, the elders bring the an innocent child yeah. and we open the back of the child, thrust out the heart. Alive. Yes, and we cut it to pieces and dis distribute it to the boys. And what does so that do? Just make them brave and charge them for the battle with the belief that bullet will not get affect them. us or get them. This last thing was still on my hand mm. when my boys went for water. Just before they got back, and I heard a voice behind me, my son, why are you sleeping? But this was in my dialect. Mm. I said, Andrew, there came you away. To look back, I saw this man in Lenny, white Lenny, but the light radiated through that, through that man mm. was so bright and brighter than the sun. Mm. And then I thought I was not a slave because he said, my son, why are you slaving? Mm. I said, well, in this whole territory, I'm the king. Mm. I'm supposed to be a king. And he said, you rightly say you're supposed to be a king, but you're living like a slave. Mm. And those words were very hard words in my dialect. Mm. I said, I don't understand. Uh, what did he say? I mean, repent and live or refuse and die. Mm. And he vanished. And the light vanished. Mm. And I came up to myself and I was so confused. Now, to go for battle, I tried to signal the battle. My pistol got bust. I got so afraid and retreated from the front. Mm. But I got afraid for the first time. The next stop was the place where there had been an assassination attempt on Joshua's life just the day before. This one is broken. The whole thing was there, tables were there breaking. And he got back on the road. And he just, he hit you and then ran? Yeah. yeah. Pick up the other guy and left. Yeah. I heard a call. I heard it. I heard a person. He's out now. Right. Then I look and the person was on the phone. Yeah. So I'm like this, going, and just looking. Just to turn like this, I saw the car crossing. Yeah. The tire mark is there. Right. It left from there, cross here. So I went to leap over. You jumped over the car. Yeah, I jumped over the car. Yeah. Since I was not close to the car, to go over it, my shoulder was hit, and the car pushed me back. And who do you think it was? Ah. Uh, maybe one of the people who are hurt. 
is trying to revenge. Hurt a lot of people in the war. In the war. I hurt a lot of people. And I don't think I have had the opportunity to appeal to every one of them. Next, Joshua wanted to show us his mission in the country, where he was rehabilitating ex-child soldiers. There are some guys who are very brilliant. As you go in there, you will see them. Very brilliant, very intelligent young kids. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the war have affected them. I tell them uh, violence is not the best way. Uh, it's an ancient strategy. And once violence, as a seed, be sown into a child, it's very hard for the child to come out of it. And are there a lot of people who fought during the war that can't get rid of the violence? It's very hard. Very it, hard. Takes, it takes time to get rid of the violence. Yeah. How did, how did you get rid of the violence? To be frank, it's not 100% gone. Yet. Yeah. I still have nightmares. I still have flashbacks. Mm -hmm. I wish I never took part in the war. Yeah. That's my mission. OK. Come, you can make it. Come, come and see. Did they bring bug juice? Nobody brought bug juice. <laughs> I would have taken you, but my back. No, 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 it's OK. Well, I don't mind getting wet. <laughs> it's safe. It's, they drink this, people drink this water. <laughs> yeah. About a million people in Africa die every year from malaria and malaria thrives in swamps exactly like this. It's very smoochly on my moochly. Thanks. Good. Some worm's gonna go in my foot and I'm gonna get a filthy little tumor. Hello. Um. And my day's just shitting out blood. <laughs> This is what all fear stems from. <laughs> like, you know, so these were some of the boys that you fought with before yeah, or no? Yeah, brought, yeah, some of them have fought, some of them fought on me. That is the, the fighters who used to fight naked. Yeah. Uh, so is that why your nickname was General Butt Naked? Yes, because I was naked, because I fought naked. Yeah. A lot of people would drink or do drugs before fighting? Yeah, most of my boys, yeah. they would drain the blood from the innocent child and drink it before going to battle. So you kill the, the child? Yes. And then drink the blood. Yeah. Okay. And then, why would you fight naked? It was believed once I'm naked, no bullet can affect me. Once I'm naked, I could disappear. And this is his mission that they're building. They're singing now. Welcome to our home. Thank you. <laughs> Mustafa was, a, was one of the generals who fought for Charles Taylor. So you fought for Charles Taylor and... I fought for uh, Johnson. 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 So you, you were enemies before? Yeah, we were enemies. Yeah. I was 16 at that 16. time. When they initiated me as Charles Taylor, I left with them until I became target commander. Mm -hmm. After the war, we become parentless, friendless. Nobody wants to see you say, at all because you are fighting war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We end up in the street. I was in a gray yard, used to smoke drugs, taking drugs, sleeping on the street. And then I knew he, when he was born naked, I was fighting against him. When I saw him, he was already pastor. He took her to the church. From the church, continually, he did managing with her until today, you see us. We were children and the damage I was left. It is simple that in Kudo in the war, we were fighting. We were fighting, they didn't even get time for us. By, by the grace of God, I tried to run away from it before, and I saw that running away could not help me. Mm -hmm. My daughter was walking one day, Michaela, she was a baby, more baby, and somebody told her, you bought naked daughter. 
and she started crying. Mm -hmm. She never knew who Born Naked was. Mm -hmm. See, somebody said I Born Naked daughter. Because of that, I tried to run away with her, mm -hmm. also live far. But then, so one day she will have to go home. Mm -hmm. So since there is still time, go back and see how you can repair some of those things. Mm -hmm. Time will come and somebody will tell her what Born Naked did. Mm -hmm. And then she will have the opportunity to tell them what Joshua Bly did. Mm -hmm. So there will be monument built for him, memorial that she can be proud of. So that is how I take the challenge. You can make the change. You can make the difference. Where are we right now? Uh, this is the St. John Monovia uh, Cemetery. Cemetery. After the war, the ex-combatants went into crime and they were looking for hide-up. Nowhere for them to stay. So this is the cemetery where after the war, there was nowhere to live. So the people would come in, empty out the graves, and live in the graves. And maybe up to about 4,000 people lived in the graves. See, all these are empty. It's a very heavy vibe, yeah. empty graves everywhere. We were just at lunch, we were talking about, we, we ordered some ribs, and uh, you said, no, I don't like to eat uh, flesh. flesh. And I said, why don't you like to eat flesh? And you told me the story about coming back from Nigeria. Could you tell us that story? Specifically, one time, I was very hungry, and I saw the only thing was around was sticks, dry meat. When I took the first bite, I noticed it was, it was hema, hema flesh. Yeah. So I wash up the pepper to be very sure, wash up the pepper from it to get a taste. And I got a taste, it was him on an alarm, and police came and arrested the guy. And I told them, well, I was one of the generals in Liberia, and this is my name, and uh, this is what we did to eat. Uh, I ate it several times before, though I'm converted now. You ate human flesh? Yeah, a lot of times, so they discovered, so uh, they saw the pictures, and they went to the internet and they knew that, okay, it's truth. Yeah. What would you eat? Uh, some people eat the heart. Yeah. Now, for hunger, people eat around here. Yeah. And, you know, because it's softer, it's quick to don't. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. We're talking about eating human flesh in a graveyard. It's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can go. I want to eat some African stuff. The fear of white in the world. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. This morning we're going to pray for the seven of God. Bless you, oh God, for what you have done. So 
receiving some dangerous calls but people have been threatening me and why they try to kill me is what I want to make meaning about today I am an old sinner I was about the age of 11 and was initiated as a priest of my tribe I did a lot of human sacrifices killed a lot of innocent people now I know I was wrong but thank God that extended his mercy to me through Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28, he said, all things, all single thing, not some things, but every single thing works together for good. But one thing I am sure of, I am convinced that I'm called by God's own purpose. And once you are called by God's purpose, the Bible says all things work together for good. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Liberia on the one hand is more crime and poverty and rape and cannibalism than you've ever seen. But on the other, it's also got a church on every street corner. Every car has a religious slogan. They have huge revivals with tens of thousands of worshipers. It's some sort of weird heaven and hell scenario. Joshua, I started to get a bit of Stockholm Syndrome because he's charming, the churches are nice, there's not as much danger, and I started to like him. But as he was preaching, I thought to myself, this guy's killed tens of thousands of people. In fact, he's probably killed the relatives of the people in the church worshiping and adoring him now. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck is going on? This morning, I want to preach on a team. Effective generational transfer. Before that, I want to introduce one of my latest friends, <laughs> Shane, and a group that have interest in coming to Liberia to go to some dead areas, areas that people do not commonly go. And I thought they were not serious because there are some places that I go to evangelize, nobody want to go there with me. We reach to the water, to where my camp is most of the time, if a guest comes who are not used to Liberia, they're afraid of the swamp, so we have to tow them. And these guys refuse to be towed. They walk in the water with us yesterday. <laughs> I was in a little doubt, but after a moment with them, I knew they were true friends. So I want to stick him in the corner of this moment that you say a few words, at least greet you. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for having me in your church. Uh, praise God. 
And I'd like to say uh, thank you to Joshua Blay for all the good work he's doing. And hopefully we can help. And hopefully we can show what we're doing here in Liberia, what you're doing in Liberia. And we can help make it better and bring some more awareness to what's happening here. Amen. I have to admit that when Joshua handed me the mic, I had no idea what I was saying. At that point in the trip, I felt like I was on acid. Believe me, the world is changing. What are you teaching your children? The war has come, it has passed. You will soon be old. 30, 40 years from now, you will soon be old. And you will pass. What are you leaving? as a principle for your children to follow. What? The whole world already know me as General Bodnicki or killer, a rapist. But my children will know me as a man who stands for the truth. Am I talking to somebody? Before the future, according to morals, those reasons do not hold. I'm a murderer. I'm a blooded handed person. The world is changing. The mistakes of our fathers cause lesser harm to the mistake that we make to our children. That is, if we feel them, stand to your feet. I sat and listened to Joshua preach, I thought about the fact that the UN is leaving in less than a year. And Rambo had told us that the generals are ready to fight. They have the soldiers, they have the guns, and they're living in abject poverty. And I wondered if that happened, would Joshua stay with God, or would he return to being general butt naked? You can deliver your generation. You can deliver this nation. You can deliver your community. You can deliver your tribe. You can deliver this continent. Somebody shout glory. Let us pray.